It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this for November 8th, 2023 for the next hour or so. Let me help you sort through the world of gaming on Game Mess Mornings Live with me, Jeff Grubb. Today, this is Miyamoto, and we have major Grand Theft Auto 6 news, a shocking announcement from Nintendo, and a tease for a beloved franchise that is still years away from an actual new entry. But first, please join me in welcoming today's co-host to Game Mess Mornings. It's Tamor Hussein, everybody. Tam, how are you doing? I am doing okay. I know uh, people on Wednesday tune in to find and hope to see Lucy. Um, but unfortunately, you get me today. I'm a poor facsimile for Lucy, but I will, you know what, I'll do my best. And uh, hopefully that, that is enough for everyone. It's all British to me. So I can't tell. Yeah. I literally can't tell you apart. Just and yeah. not even, couldn't even begin to tell you the differences. Fantastic. Uh, we have a, a shorter week uh, here, so so st we wouldn't be doing Dreg's Day. Uh, Tam, this couldn't be more the opposite of a Dreg's Day. I, like. I have fin I finally caught some good luck. I've yeah. got the opposite of a Dreg's Day for once. A What's the opposite of a Dreg's Day? I, I, I don't know. It's... Uh... And everything day, it's it's just everything is happening. Day, All the news a, is happening. It's a it's a certified pop off. That's what we call yes, it. Yes, we are popping off. We're calling uh, it a pop off for, for sure. Uh, I don't know it, it, how how you been though. Uh, you uh you, you like I know you are busy doing a million different things. Last time we talked last week, last Friday, so it's not been even been a full week. We were talking about our struggles keeping up with games in general. I'm still uh, right I'm, there. I'm still there. I'm still, and uh, you'll be surprised to learn that I played. I've completed zero games in the time since we last talked. <laughs> I um, <laughs> I have been I, I playing did beat WarioWare, but that I, that hardly counts because you can beat that in a sitting. So, um, yeah. but, but that uh, that's my latest one. So I, I'm gonna count it as a win. I've been playing Thirsty Suitors, which is real fun. Yeah, so it's Ooh. a lot. It's a good time. I want to make time for that. I've been playing Humanity. Yeah. That's been my like uh, one of my cleanup games for the year, uh, and I've been enjoying that a lot. But that's like going way back, and then these new ones, like Thirsty Suitors, comes out. Um, okay, this one looks like it's worthy of my time. So mm -hmm. we'll see. I'm going to try to fit it in. It is uh, actually, when I look at the time of, oh, you know, really three, four weekends before we're, we're deciding a lot of this stuff, that's um, that's not scary. enough time. That's it's scary. scary. That's scary. So uh, yeah. BG3 is still the thing I am trying to fit in enough time with so that I can speak to it uh, and when I know everyone else is going to want to speak to it. So uh, we'll see. That's a tough it's gonna one. To be, it's going to be fun, though. A game of the year for oh, us yes. is going to be exciting. We have been working on it for... Uh, so there's two scenarios. Either it goes exactly as we planned, right. and it's going to be fantastic. Second scenario, it goes completely not as we planned, <laughs> and it'll still be fantastic in a different way. Yes, yes, you guys will all enjoy how it doesn't go yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in chat, all caps, Grub, it's not going to happen for us with Baldur's Gate 3. I know, man. <laughs> but we'll still have those co-op sessions, Jan. We'll always have that. No one could take that away from us, uh, except for Dan Riker, who did definitely try to take that away from us. Uh, <laughs> all right, you know what? Let's, uh, let's get into this news. There is a lot to talk about, so let's explain what we do here. Most weekdays, I, Jeff Grubb, will help piece your gaming life back together. That includes breaking news and maybe even some of our own original reporting. Tiny bit of that today. For all these topics, I'll get the input of a bona fide expert who will make me look smart. If you were watching live on Twitch, welcome. You can always listen to the show later on podcast feeds. Hello, exchange for YouTube. Game Best Mornings or find the RSS on GiantBomb.com. Oh, you can also catch the show later with chapters and timestamps on YouTube. Hello, Hello YouTube. YouTube. All right, we have a lot to get into, so let's start the I morning mess with. One second. It, hey, you know, don't, don't pay attention to me when I talk. I'm I'm not. Uh, all right, Grand Theft Auto Six trailer is coming in December, and that is confirmed by Rockstar Games themselves in a uh, tweet, a series of tweets, and in a press release they sent out this morning to our emails. Uh, Sam Hauser and, uh, from Rockstar Games, who's this still is there. Sam Hauser. This is Sam I Hauser. On the new <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, "Blah blah blah." Next month is the 25th anniversary of Rockstar Games. Uh, he says we wouldn't be anything without the, without the fans. The pertinent bit of info here for most people is going to be, we are very excited to let you know that in early December, we will release the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of sharing these experiences with all of you. Thank you, Sam Hauser. That reads like, he always, wait, let me, let me see the original thing. Always get someone to double check what you're saying, because it, it reads like we look forward to many, many more years of sharing the experience of giving you trailers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? I mean, no, man. <laughs> Not That's what, not we, what we want. It's actually not what we're in this for. Uh, thank you, Sam, though. Copy edit, copy edit, copy edit. Yeah. 
Uh, you got a dangly modifier there. It's messing everything up. Um, he, he, uh, hey, what? <laughs> okay, I mean, listen, this game has to come out eventually. But why, why are they telling us in an email? I don't, I mean, about this trailer. Why wouldn't they just drop the trailer? Well, I mean, I mean, like the, it leaked, of course, like well, to a degree. Like, a, like Schreier reported it yesterday. But he reported that they were going to say this exact thing. They so were going to say weird. this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, there's also various other factors, like business things that, that yes. go behind it. Uh, people are now already being like, Game Awards, Game Awards, which is like, uh, come on, no, I don't think so, dog. Yeah, like, probably not, <laughs> but they, they just don't need to. So there's two scales of like, I would love to see a Game Awards, that'd be amazing, but like separate from that, there's two like, now, be outside of showing it at a place like Game Awards, you, you have two like echelons. Either you're big enough, like Nintendo, where you host your own thing and you put on a direct. Yeah. And that is what draws everyone to you. Or you're even bigger, like Rockstar, and you just put it on YouTube and it kills everything mm -hmm. compared to it. Like Rockstar is so big that they can like just just put it on wherever. They could put it out on like if they put it on MySpace tomorrow it would revitalize MySpace for the next 10 years. Like that is, <laughs> that is the power that, that Rockstar has. So they could, they, I feel like this is them just being like, yeah, man, we're just going to do our thing. We'll, we'll flex in on these uh, release hoes and we're out of here. I, uh, it. it does. It does seem that way. It, um, I mean, it's, we'd be remiss if we didn't point out, hey, Take Two's stock price is up 7% this week on this I news. I wonder why. Yeah. What could have caused that? Right. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, listen, Take Two's not going to hate that they're out there talking about this. Um, that definitely is going to move the markets. Uh, it's, uh, you know, to, to what end? Like, hey, whether that the, price, the stock price goes up now versus the stock price goes up in December when they actually show the trailer. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe they're hoping for a double dip there. I, I don't know. Stock, the stock price is going up. No, yes. from now until that thing is out yeah exactly <laughs> like, right it's built like, in now it, yeah it ain't going anywhere yeah yeah that thing is up and it will stay up or or the only thing will knock it down is like some wild shit like some real like uh economic shit or like uh well i mean yeah, sam do you Houser think they're like kill the man in, yeah. on camera <laughs> I mean, yeah that, but like it's like this is their way of um insulating themselves against bad news that might be coming i again i just like that this email just feels strange to me but i think you're you're probably right that they do yeah. things their own way. They can get away with it. Hey, we're going to be doing that. We, we This is the 25th anniversary. We're going to mark it in some way. And why not tell them we're doing a, a trailer next month? Let's just, or yeah, I mean, yeah, next month. Jesus. Like, yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't want to speculate on any bad stuff. Like, this is, I'm taking it for ways, which is a good thing right yeah. now. Um, uh, What the, what in the world? Uh, Sweet. I O Interactive wants to make more than one Bond game. Sweet. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, So I think what is happening here is like, they just taking the classic strategy and just making it a little less chaotic for people, you know, because like previously there would just be like rumblings of a thing happening. Yeah. And then and like maybe a, a site appears where, you know, people are you know watching a countdown for a little bit and then it just breaks everything in the Internet. So now that it's just like, hey, man, we're going to do this. Yeah, don't worry about it. So just like priming people, it's still very much the same, but it's it's still in line with their classic strategy, which is. Uh, yes girl give us nothing up until give us something so that's that's what it is i think uh okay well then for grand theft auto 6 trailer debuting in early december almost certainly not at the game awards on its own what do you want from it uh do you have I, I want i want them to show the exact same footage that got leaked <laughs> <laughs> like nothing changed and they're just like you're right man this is it this is what we got <laughs> See, I, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit bummed that they didn't tell or that they were telling us that it's coming because I would love for them to do a bait and switch where it's like the Rockstar logo, everyone freaks out, and then it does just start up with that exact same uh, GTA Five trailer like that we've seen twenty times yeah. in, in various forms <laughs> since it came out, and then just like from the makers of GTA Five, and then finally going to GTA Six, just that whiplash <laughs> yeah. would rule. That uh, would be so good. The thing is, like. Um, it's hard to to really gauge what this game is going to be. I don't remember what the rumors were, but like, um, I feel like it's it could go either way. Like, you, I feel like the technology that they came up with for the multiple protagonists yes. element of it 
conventional wisdom, traditional thinking says that that will be some sort of core element to the new one. It's like a foundational element, right? Like it's, yes. you don't put that much time, effort, and get it working that well to just throw it away. I feel, but then Rockstar is the, exactly uh, the kind of company that would throw it away and be like, we came up with something entirely else. I feel like that element of it will st- still be there to some degree. Maybe not in the three character or four character, two character approach. I feel like it will be utilized in some other fashion. Yeah. Um, and and that's exciting for me. As for what else is gonna, you know, there's that there's that rumor it's gonna be a female protagonist, which is like, sure, man, whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't, just uh, don't care. I'm not one of those weird incel people online that's like, no woman. Um, yeah, I'm down for that. I would listen. We live in an age of has. I'm going to put my dumb, dumb speculation hat on and just, just get crazy Let's do with it. it. We live in an age of uh, shared universes. Okay? Everyone Uh-oh. is putting everyone else in their games. Okay? And for the longest time, there's been, you know, a lot of love for a character that was uh, a rock star character that was uh, born on the PlayStation. Okay, a little miscreant that has been knocking around schools. Uh huh. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, and I I love this idea. Who do you think it is? Well, okay, I was gonna now I know you're gonna pull a fast one on me. A uh, uh, bully, the titular uh, Jack is back, Jack. Fuck no, Roman Bellic <laughs> spinoff. <laughs> Cousin, I'm Cousin back. Roman. <laughs> That's what I'm. No, yeah, uh, Jimmy from Bully as yeah. the protagonist for the new GTA. Well, I mean, that, I think that was sick. see that would be, um, I think, a cool way to do it with multiple characters now. So you can have the, the female protagonist. You probably have a male lead as well, and then I think like a teenager in high school, and they're they are working on something together, and uh, and each of them has to get things in place in their own sphere. Here. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would appreciate that. I mean, I think that's pretty similar to what they did with five, but I think having yeah. different kinds of characters in vastly different settings could be very cool. I, I wouldn't even like hate like um, what? a little yeah. bit of a different time settings because I think this uh, the rumors like they're doing some Vice City 80s stuff again. Um, yeah, but like but a, maybe, a maybe like you like play life a life of crime. Yeah, yeah, life of crime. Like you like to play a different eras of that character, and it's jumping between them. Uh, you know, Pulp Fiction style or something like that. That's that's how they bring back that like uh, character switching mechanic. When you right. switch, you switch eras. Yes, exactly. Instead of like characters, that would be so sick. It's like, oh, I'm gonna switch to this character in the future or in the past, and then you get a different version of that city. Or like you get a different version of your whatever surroundings, and and that would be pretty sick. That's, uh, real that's quick, I'm gonna see Rock, if I can. Persona Five Rockstar. Tactica did leak onto Steam early, and I'm gonna see if I can download it real quick. <laughs> no, damn, it, doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. People were able to get it for a little bit. I was in the shower when this happened. And I forgot to get it as soon as I got out. Um, My man was getting clean when Persona Five was being accidentally released. Yeah, getting a little dirty on the on Steam. Uh, yeah. uh oh, okay. Um. And then as for the, you know, the humor, the style, the writing of GTA 6, everyone, that's, everyone says it's, it's, what, it's difficult, right? But uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm most interested in seeing. Like, how, how does Rockstar adapt to the times? Because I know, I mean, like, I think one of the houses said this before, like, the, the stuff that they put in that game, in that series, is no longer parody. Like, real life is much more ridiculous than anything a writer uh, writing parody uh, kind of material could ever conceive of you know it's it's mm-hmm. wacky in 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 ways that are like what do they keep going on the extreme or they do they try a more like grounded actual you know do a godfather style tale where it's like oh this is going to be one of those big ones you know this one those kind of like we're trying to add to the the mythos of you know the mafia or whatever it may be the life of crime thing i feel like it's still going to have that cheeky rock rock star tone yeah at the end of the day i'm just i hope that it's not as previous games have been slightly immature like in the way that slightly. they yeah. uh yeah in the way that they approach it um I feel like GTA five was much better about it, but um, there's still kind of like enough rope for them to hang themselves with by being like childish and appealing to that kind of like immature dude, bro humor. But I, I, I trust rockstar to be better than that, especially having come off like 
um, Red Dead 2. So it's yep. like, yeah. This uh, last point for, for this story, uh, this will be the first Grand Theft Auto game without Dan Hauser, uh, not Dan Hausen. That's a different, that's a wrestler. It's a different guy. Dan Hauser is um, m- moved on, has his own studio doing a thing. Uh, I don't know if we know much about it. And also Leslie Binzies, uh, who uh, basically made Grand Theft Auto online on, uh, like with his own team completely separate from the Hausers who weren't interested in it until it started popping off after release. Um, and then they sort of you know, took ownership of it at that point. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, it, but, you know, this is a slightly different team. You know, Sam Hauser is still there, but, uh, you know, it, the, the creative makeup could be slightly changed. And it'll be interesting to see if we can uh, glean any sort of uh, uh, effect of that in this trailer. Probably not. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to be a Grand Theft Auto trailer. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, the houses are a core part of it. And more so than other like auteur situations where you slowly learn that oh it's actually just more of a team effort than we most people realize like that is still very much the case but the houses definitely had a more noticeable impact on on the games as as a duo i don't think that completely goes away when one of them leaves you know um i think the more interesting i feel like the rest of the team that has been there a really long time does a lot of that same work to you know make a gta game what it is there's a lot of people that work hard to make that thing i think more interesting aspect of it is like rockstar had to change in a lot of ways post red dead redemption 2 when there was a lot of revelations that were not entirely surprising about corporate culture and and like the the balance of uh, work life and uh to from for all from based on reports like they have been improving that significantly um so i'm i'm interested in seeing how that impacts the studio and whether i mean like we barely hear from rockstar employees correct so but like they will find a way like news will definitely come out about what it's like there um but yeah the how much of that kind of manifests in in the next cycle is going to be interesting because once you open the door to a GTA f- game, it's not like just that it, like you will hear ev- more things about Rockstar. You'll more hear more things about the game. You'll probably hear more things about the process as well, ideally. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting time um, for, for, for Rockstar and us as games uh, uh, people, but uh, I wish it wasn't in December. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, Jack Thompson, you think we'll hear from him? Remember that name? I hope so, man. Me too. I hope he comes back because, like, <laughs> I feel like the the internet has been in the hyperbolic time chamber, uh-huh. figuring out how to like clown on weirdos on the internet. So, like, we are like n- now more oh, powerful than ever. Exactly. So, if he showed up, it would be it'd brutal. be bad. Yes, he's already it been disbarred. Would be we would brutal. just be dancing like, on his it, grave, and he's not even dead. Was, oh my god, it would be so funny to watch this man get like absolutely wrecked by modern day. Like, just says anything and just like bombarded with L L L L. You <laughs> fell off. You fell off. You fell off. Turn him into a TikTok AI. Just he's, this man's done. Like, uh, he's never he's never coming back. Man. Jack Thompson was the lawyer that uh, brought those lawsuits against the game for uh, for causing school shootings or whatever. Uh, Jack Thompson was a failed lawyer that had no fucking prospects that clung to relevancy by trying to vilify video games and sadly the american legal system is built in a way where it allows fucking morons to just wreak havoc for extended periods of times and uh, that's what that's what he was built played by bill paxton in the movie where uh dan uh daniel radcliffe played i think dan hauser i think he played dan hauser and then uh <laughs> that thing is <laughs> i have i have that on my plex server because they the rockstar had it destroyed yeah. off the internet and uh, you is, can't watch it anywhere on bbc's shit um there is a tweet about it oh fuck i forget what is this uh I think it's like, what is this basil brush bullshit? Um, but it was like, you could tell uh, it was one of the houses got the keys to the to the the Twitter account and tweeted some wild shit yeah. to be like, <laughs> it's like it's basically saying like, what is this Willy Wonka bullshit uh-huh. from the BBC? Yep, exactly. It's so funny. I, uh, I I think that movie is really weird and fun. Just the idea of Bill Paxton playing Jack Tom. I'll, I found, I'll I found never it. get over that. Oh, what did he What did he say? He said, was Basil Brush busy? What exactly is this random made-up bollocks? 
<laughs> at, and that's at BBC <laughs> yes. from the rock from the main Rockstar Games account. And then they, I, so and then they, I think they sued the BBC and had it uh, <laughs> ceases. See, or they at least it ceases and desists. Uh, so I'll, yeah. I'll send it to you on uh, on Slack just okay. so people know that we're not joking. But like honestly, it's one of the most impressive and hilarious flexes I've ever seen on the internet. Just someone taking the corporate account is just like. What the fuck? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let me uh, bring that up here real quick. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. And then, uh, where's the OBS? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. Like, I'm glad that we're finally at the stage where we're going to see the game. Uh, that's the worst part of the lead up to all of this stuff for us. Like, mm -hmm. people just making shit up in an escalating fashion until like you know we've got these wild ideas for what a video what the next cta is uh -huh. I, yeah i think that they are uh probably going to just keep doing their own thing and the game is going to look and feel very expensive and probably has some really great great tech in it uh and it, it'll set its own expectations and then we'll see if it can overcome those so uh, what do you yeah what do you reckon for gta online yeah, that's, I mean, that is the big question, right? Like, can they, uh, do they reset the clock? Do they go GTA Online 2 and say, everybody move on to this? I think they probably actually do. Um, but, but uh, you know, I also, I wouldn't be surprised if they are like, oh, you know, GTA Online continues here. It's a complete refresh uh, and, and we'll slowly move everyone over, but it's still the same basic client. Uh, I could see them doing that, but I think Rockstar is going to want to go big and and try to do their whole whole new thing. They now I, Red, Red Dead Redemption Online might have scared them away from that, but I don't know. I feel like they, I feel like they create more of a kind of uh, distinction between them by not having them, you know, trying to message them concurrently. Yeah, I feel like that's a big part of like the initial when GTA Online was first announced, it was like kind of competing against itself in a lot of ways the, the, around GTA 5 as well. Um, so I feel like uh, I feel like they just do the thing where it's like, we're going to talk about the, the main story campaign and some multiplayer elements, and then we'll come back to GTA Online. At another point, they'll say something generic, like the future of GTA Online is looking bright and we've got some major plans for it. And then they eventually do the full overhaul thing where it's like, hey, we... We redid this. We got a bunch, bunch of brand new shit. We're dropping all the new assets in there. Let's let's go. Do you think there's a chance that they kind of from software it a little bit and have um, online functionality in your single player campaign where you flip on a switch and now you see other players doing things at the same time as you? Maybe not necessarily ghost form, but maybe in ghost I, form. I think I think that there I had there has to be some element. Of I that. think that like that's, a, like, that feels like necessary at this point. I agree. Community, yeah, like especially in this, like you think about it, like what's the next stage of this crime fantasy? Like it is like having a gang and and being like actively present around them in a way. I mean, they could do that with AI, but I imagine that they'll figure out some way to represent like other people, clans, whatever it may be in in the game. Um, whether they have, like, I don't think they'll have an active impact on your world. Like, yeah, that seems so wild because people do the wackiest shit in GTA games. Right, you can't be in the middle of your 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 mission and someone's just suddenly like driving a car off a roof and rocket launching it. Or yeah, or, or like carjacking you. Like, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're exactly. supposed to be the power fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, you know, okay, GTA 6, we'll know more in about a month, uh, so we'll, we'll talk about it then, I'm sure there'll be a lot to speculate on between now and then, and then we'll see what the lead-up is to the actual game's release, but seems like that's gonna be happening relatively soon after this, within the year after this gets announced, that seems to probably what we can expect. Uh, yeah. All right, new Mass Effect teaser uh, finally confirms what we've all been guessing. This is from Kenneth Shepard at Kotaku. The new Mass Effect Shepherd. game. Uh, yes, Shepard. Uh, the next oh, Mass oh. Effect game. I think, I, I, I don't know if that's a pen name, but I know that Kenneth Shepard is a big Mass Effect fan. Shepard. So. Um, <laughs> the new Mass Effect game has been shrouded in mystery since its 2020 Game Awards reveal. November 7th is in seven day when Bioware, fan, Bioware and fans celebrate the science fiction RPG series. But this year's a, is a little different. The studio gave us a couple teasers for the next game at the same time as laid off QA workers are picketing the company's demand uh, while demanding severance. Uh, the teasers finally gave us some solid clues regarding what the next Mass Effect is going to be about. 
The December 2020 teaser suggested it would take place long after the original trilogy, while returning squad mate Liara to Sony, uh, making an appearance, but but looking notably older than her youthful age of 109 in the original series. Yeah, this is a... Kenneth Shepard is a fan, I think. Uh, Bioware developers also hinted on social media that the next game would be a sequel to both the original tr trilogy and Mass Effect Andr Andromeda. Now, the first <laughs> teaser is a five second... Well, it's five seconds long, they actually have pieced these all together now at this point, but while this story got written while they were piecing it together still. And uh, they, it had related text associated with it that said things like Epsilon, which is the fifth letter of the Greek alphabet, so the fifth Mass Effect game. Uh, and then they would say, uh, the, the, maybe the most notable line is, Andromeda Distress Signal Detected. No oh boy, that game was distressed for sure. Uh, but oh man, I, uh, Andromeda definitely made me. I was sending out many distress signals I, while playing Andromeda. Uh -huh. I took time off to play that game, and at one point, there was what the fuck's the Krogan's name? Oh, I, I shit! I, I can't, I can't remember even game. remember. It's yeah. not Grunt. It's uh, well, I don't know. I walked into a room, and there were is it Drax? Drax. There's, there's, a, there's a Drax. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I walked in and there were three of them just Rex, standing there. Rex, like, Rex, wait, Rex. No, no, Rex is no, Rex is the good one. Drac. Okay, is it Drac? Drac, Drac, Drac. Man, That's why well, we got there. I walked into a room and there was three of them. One of them was like, <laughs> one of them was like, it was so That's funny. One of them, impressive, actually. One of them was leaning on like a a uh, a railing and looking cool. The other one was just staring at a wall, and there was a third one just kind of like <laughs> sitting on the ground, clipped through. And I was like, this is. Distress signal, distress signal, distress signal. <laughs> I, I got to a point in that game where I was in uh, whatever their Mako was called, and I'm supposed to be driving it up to this big place on a hill, and it's like you could drive all the way around this hill to like find the way up, and I drove around it three times without finding where I was supposed to go, and there was no oh. waypoint to help me. No one was saying anything, and I was just like, I'm never fucking playing this game again, I, and I, I have not such amazing, sense. I, I had this amazing moment where you go to uh, whatever the, those dungeons were, the way you'd go inside one of those weird uh, like structures, and I got in there, and uh, I was doing one of the platforming challenges, and like fucked it up, and went into a pit, and I respawned. And it respawned the car with me in this little, <laughs> in this little like very small space, and I was like, "Hell yeah, I'm doing this!" I got in that car, and I was driving around one of these places that was not built to have a car in it. I'm just like, it was so fucking dumb. Uh, Kenneth continues. The big reveal here is Andromeda. Andromeda distress signal detected, confirming that the interstellar, interstellar migration movement from the fourth game will be part of the story. Bioware tells next. Fans are speculating Liara and a crew might be responding to the distress to call. As it was confirmed in, Andr in Andromeda, she was in contact with the initiative after their departure from the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. uh, blah, blah, blah. The, the final trailer did come out. And, Don't blah, 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 Mass Effect lore. Have some uh, respect. Blah, yeah, okay. Uh, all right, you want to you get in there? All right, let's go. Uh, what is the distress yeah, call? Reason. It's not quite clear, but given that the Ket invasion was still happening at the end of Mass Effect Andromeda, it's not like that crew is lacking in danger, of course. Uh, the actual video oh. doesn't show much beyond someone, perhaps the aura, walking through what looks like a space station before it abruptly cuts to black. I, I have this video somewhere. Um, but it, basically... The trailer is a small teaser of a person in a cool outfit walking down a hallway, and that's it. And uh, people, you want some original reporting? This game is just nowhere near coming out. This is not, this is... Um, oh, no chaw. I was told, like, so when they announced, uh, or when they, like, revealed Dragon Age Dreadwolf in 2018... Uh, this is similar in terms of timeline, where that, that was announced in 2018, <laughs> and we're not getting that game to maybe next year... So now do the math for that, and we're talking 2029 for Mass Effect 5. Dog, this, this game is... I've heard some things as well, and this game is uh, so far away. It <laughs> is so it far is away. In another galaxy right now. Uh-huh. Fucking hell. Uh, well. yeah, it's, so, hey, Tam, why'd they do this? Uh, maybe you'll find out, and you'll hear a discussion about this <laughs> on the latest episode of Spot On. GameSpot's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, definitely fun. will have a conversation about this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, when, we, if, like, when I asked, it was just like, hey, is this just because they felt they had to do something for N seven day? Yes. For this yeah. for this thing, that's exactly, that's all this is. Um, it, you got to imagine like they would be having 
uh, like well, they, they have to talk about like hey is this a good idea who knows if they thought it was a good idea or not but um it's proof of life it's it's just proof of life i, suppo and, I like, suppose the yeah i suppose it's yeah i think fans would probably rather have it than not right yeah yeah i i think i mean it, it's annoying because like it is does it have the thing that frustrates me is it's a teaser that is mysterious that presents no like tangible kind of points to really connect to and go like oh this is where we're at like i would like it if they showed something like maybe i haven't scoured over the i am a massive mass effect fan but i haven't like poured over it yet and i will but i wish there was like so give us something let us know something right now it feels like smoke and mirrors which is as a fan the thing that's worrying it's like if you if you're going to do the small teaser give me some insight into what's going on and i feel like the andromeda thing is probably what they're what they're like uh pinning the, that on being like oh we told you it's connected to and but you told us that before we knew that andromeda was going to be part of it to some degree like i feel like there needs to be something that tells us a little bit more about this game, just so that you give us the confidence that you're not like sitting there with a blank piece of paper and then last minute coming up with a cool jacket, um, which un undeniably cool jacket. I'm sure that oh, you're yeah. going to charge me seven hundred dollars, and I will consider paying it. Same, and it will look absolutely awful. Yeah, on it's going to look not going to fit it. me at all. Yeah, I think the also the other thing is like it needs to be a proof of life. They have more reason than ever to need to do that from a developer perspective and from a publisher perspective bioware had layoffs obviously on the star wars side but um i imagine there was those that impacted the studio as a whole bioware's reputation has sadly kind of tanked in a lot of ways because you know we haven't had a game from them in a really long time. People have been exiting the main names that people know of have have, have like exited, um, and and people want some sort of indication that they're still alive. And then also there's like the on the EA side that the EA is not looking good right now. Again, layoffs. This game uh, protests against their picketed and. They need some sort of like, hey, we need to show people we're still making games that people care about as opposed to ultimate team forever and, and whatever this thing is. So I feel like there's a lot of reasons to have this beyond N7. Whether those were factored in is another matter entirely. It could very well be that they wanted something to tease people with on this day that is they've marketed as being a big deal for them. But I suspect that it also has it plays like double duty for EA and Bioware to a degree. Whether it successfully improves the outlook of those companies right now, I don't think so. Like it's it's a you need to give us something more than that. Like I, I'm not overly excited about Mass Effect, and if you're not overly exciting me about Mass Effect, like you're doing something wrong. Um, I just I just don't. It's not enough to make me go, oh, Bioware's back. We're, we're back, baby. Yep. Bioware's, Bioware's in this shit. Because you don't have Dreadwolf. You, I've seen little to nothing of Dreadwolf. I don't know anything about Mass Effect. And that it has been that way for years. Maybe at Game Awards we get something more. But for now, fine. It's, it looks like Mass Effect. You've got the lens flare. You've got a nice coat. Looks kind of like Liara. Nice one. Yeah, I, I think if they can... Um, if This teaser can eventually be a W if we do get... A decent amount of, of info about Dreadwolf soon. Game Awards sounds right to me. They've done stuff at the, at the Game Awards before. I'm con I'm expecting them to be there. If they're not, it better be soon after. Because Dreadwolf was, you know, there's a there was a chance Dreadwolf could have came out this year. Obviously, it, it did keep moving internally, as I've reported before. It's now look they're looking at you know by by the mid next year something like that. Um, if that game comes out and is good, people get, can then look back at this teaser and be like, okay. Let's start thinking about Mass Effect. We can get excited about mm -hmm. that. And then there's a couple of years where we don't hear anything. It's like, we, I mean, yeah, the Dreadwolf came out, and that's great, and we're, we're loving that. And then uh, they could start talking about uh, Mass Effect uh, 5 in a little bit more uh, terms after that. So yeah. Here's what they do at Game Awards, okay? Black screen, okay? Jeff introduces a trailer. We have something new from Bioware and EA. We get that that quintessential Mass Effect moment. You know, the light breaking over the planet, and it creates that curvature. And was like slowly pulling out. People are like, "Oh hell yeah! It's 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 Mass Effect. Everyone knows that curving light thing." And as it pulls out, it's Solus's bald head from Dragon Age. <laughs> and then we get a Dragon Age trailer. And everyone's like, "All right, fair enough. You did Perfect. it." Perfect. Perfect. No notes. Uh, all right, we're gonna take a quick break. 
When we get back, a lot more news, including Nintendo announcing another movie. We'll talk about that right after this. All right, we're back, and Nintendo is teaming up with Sony to create a live-action The Legend of Zelda movie. This is from Jess Howard at GameSpot. Uh, it's official. The Legend of Zelda is getting the live-action treatment. Nintendo shared the news via its official website earlier today, writing that the film is going to be co-financed by Nintendo and Sony Pictures Entertainment, uh, with Nintendo veteran and The Legend of Zelda creator Shigeru Miyamoto overseen as a producer alongside Marvel Studios and longtime like Sony collaborator, collaborator Avi Arad. Uh, according to the press release, Nintendo has already found The Legend of Zelda's director in West Ball. I, yeah, go, go hit, hit, it, hit me. Fucking, why do we people, why do people keep saying Avi Arad like it means something anymore? I, like, I, yeah, this I, man was attached to fucking Morbius. Yes. What are you talking about? Like, the man's got more L's than W's at yeah. this point. I, I, or at least he's got enough big L's that people going like, oh, we've got Avi Arad on board. Who knows that guy's name? No one gives a fuck. Listen, I knew his like, name what's going on? in the early that, days of that, superhero that, movies because of Spider-Man. And then after that, it's been really spotty record. To me, as someone who pays attention to movies to a degree, saying it's going to have Avi Arad involved is a bad thing. Yes, I am like, point, yes. no, thank you. Get him away. There's between like bad projects, failed projects, and projects that never showed up. Like Avi Arad was attached to Metal Gear, wasn't he? Like, where's that movie at? Yeah, was he? Yeah. The fuck? Like, uh, he's attached to everything. Like, we get it. He made those, he was part of those Spider Man movies. Right. I, games industry and movie industry the current generation does not give a fuck about Avi Arad don't mention him Like you, we've got this old fart from the movie world who has put out some really questionable movies in re recent, recently dealing with the most beloved of video game properties of all time like one of them and we've got this guy and he shambles in like I made Morbius <laughs> you're like what the fuck <laughs> Ooh, Morbius there. the kids were talking about that on the internet uh, do you think he got this because his name because Avi sounds like Navi? That's right. If he comes in, he's like, "Hey, listen, <laughs> great, I'll, I'll take that." Uh, yeah, okay. So Avi Rod producing West Ball directing. West Ball uh, has done the Maze Runner trilogy, which I've never seen. Some people hate him. Some people think they're okay. Uh, he's just he just finished Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which will be out soon. No idea how that's going to turn out. I like those Planet of the Apes movies, but this is his first one. Um, Nintendo says it will be deeply involved in the movie production with the aim to put smiles on everyone's faces through entertainment. Uh, by producing visual content on Nintendo IP by itself, Nintendo is creating new opportunities to have people from around the world to access the world of entertainment, which Nintendo has built. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then, of course, there was the tweet where Miyamoto just said, this is Miyamoto. I have been working on the live-action film of The Legend of Zelda for many years now with Avi Arad's son, uh, who has <laughs> produced many mega-hit films. I have asked Avi-san to produce this film with me, and we have now officially started the, the development of the film with Nintendo itself heavily involved in the production. It will take time until its completion, but I hope you look forward to seeing it. Uh Man, just Miyamoto loves making friends in Hollywood, is uh, what it sounds like to me. Every, everyone gives Kojima shit for it. Yes. But, like, uh, Miyamoto is popping Miyamoto's off right in there the same too. degree. I mean, like, I, I, I it's going to be a billion dollar success, probably. And it, it could will be, be. Uh, who knows? Like, uh, if I had to, if you put a gun to my head and said, is this movie going to be good? I would probably say, probably not. It'll probably not. Fine. It'll yeah. probably be absolutely fine. It'll be like I, I'm expecting make... uncharted levels of quality, so kind of yeah, like, like uh, aggressively we, mediocre. Yeah, we we tried to make Lord of the Rings kind of style fantasy movie, but we made it colorful. Isn't it cool? Uh, and like 50 percent of people who watch it be, are going to be like, "Is this? Are these cosplayers? What's going on?" Yeah, um, yeah, they'll, they'll have to it. really work hard to avoid that look. Uh, so. Sony. I, I, I don't understand why they went live action. That's my big question. Like, why live action? Like, you you do you play in the anime? You could have played in the animated space and not yeah. alienate all your entire fan base. Like, I feel like having a Zelda movie is a difficult ask from fans. Like, knowing that the, yes. yeah, we're going to make a movie out of this is difficult, especially with the way, like, I'm not being shitty. I love Zelda at all, but like, the way the lore is delivered is. It's tricky, right? Like it's it's hard to adapt to movies, but like 
doing it in live action is a doubly hard pill to swallow. If they had gone, we're making an animated, a CGI animated, whatever it may be, Zelda movie, it's going to be stylized. We've seen all the success around uh, Into the Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse. We're taking a similar approach to bring uh, The Legend of Zelda to big screens. It's going to be stylized. It's, it's, a, it's a movie built entirely around Groose from Wind Waker. Um, you're going to love it. That would have been the move, like, and and that people would have been like, okay, they did Mario. Mario was decent. It was fun. Um, I trust them to go and do it again with with uh, the other big property. But no, they went live action. I just I've not seen I, a live action video game movie that I've been like that was exceptional. I just I, I wonder if um because okay so Sony co producing Avi Arad uh, producing. I wonder if like Avi Arad and Sony approach Sony Pictures approached Nintendo and were like, yeah, I mean, listen, you could do another uh, animated feature film with uh, Universal and Illumination for Zelda, but that's like, animation is really good for family films, for action movies and 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 things that are more, uh, um, uh, I don't know, dramatic, like you would want to make Zelda, you got to go live action. And I wonder if they got in Nintendo's ear and convinced them that. I don't think, I think what you said is true. I think what you said about, hey, live or uh, animated for Zelda could have worked because it's Zelda and it's Nintendo and their audience would totally show up for that. But I think Hollywood might not believe that. They might have less of a, 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 a faith in the ability for Nintendo to win over that audience for something that isn't supposed to be a funny comedy family um, thing that's, you know, lighthearted or whatever. Um, I think that if that's the case, if that's what's happening here, that sounds like, oh, that's troublesome already because they're, are they going to gonna try to make this dark and gritty Zelda thing or something? Because that it's would so be weird. rough. Like, I just the more I think about it, the more problems you create by going live action. Like the the casting now is going to be a complete boondoggle, right? They could get it very right, but they even if they pick the most perfect person for Link now, there's still going to be a massive like PR and marketing war to sell that, right? Whereas if you did it animated or CG, you get the Link that everyone knows. Yeah, you get the the point year link that everyone knows and loves. You get the young Link that everyone knows and loves. But instead, you've got we've got like a I just I I every time I see a a movie from like an animated world or 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 from a video game world being pitched as live action, I always think of Shyamalan's uh, Avatar movie, and that's the only yeah. thing I can think of in my mind. Man, every that's a good every pull, live yeah. action every live action adaptation of animated things, comic things, not only comic things but like manga things and um, video game things is just Shyamalan's Avatar over and over again in my mind. And I'm just like, why did you do that? You, this was a unforced error. You didn't need to do that. That's idea. Yeah, that's that's the real fear here. Uh, do you have anyone in mind, like you know, fantasy casting or anything like that? Do you care about that? Because I'm like, at this point in my life, whatever. For Link, yeah, for Link, John Cena. John Cena's got to be it, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like. <laughs> He's built for for that role, I think. Like, Someone did perfect. mention Dave Bautista for Ganon, and I love that. I really do love that. <laughs> that would be really fun. Uh, people also want Idris Elba for for Ganon, but now make Idris Elba Link. Idris Elba Link, yeah. Idris uh, Elba. That Link. would be sick. That would rule. <laughs> I, I, I would. I would watch that version of of uh, of. Uh, here we go, Andy Samberg. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's the it's the animated series link. So he's walking around going, "Well, excuse <laughs> me, <laughs> can I get a kiss?" Oh, oh. Uh, Jan points out it was him who said Dave Bautista for for Ganon. So uh, credit where credit is due. Uh, I, I'm now sold on a live action Zelda movie. That is a live action movie based on the animated series that is the one way that you make that work and everyone goes all right you definitely made a zelda movie based on zelda a, a zelda not the one that we wanted but you did it um but yeah andy sandberg that's my pick and andy, andy sandberg animated uh, link that's, I, that's what i want i think that's a, a beautiful thing we all deserve it uh if nintendo had any guts they would make that happen uh, can someone sean i know i know he's watching this he has to watch this because it's part of his job can you get <laughs> Like Andy Samberg, any sort of shot from him and have the excuse me princess on there somehow. We need to mock together Andy Samberg as Link. Yeah, and, then, and then uh, Nikki's that... definitely listening. Nikki, you want to just throw that up on, on... Nikki, Nikki, you want to do that? Go for it. Just throw it up go there. For it. Yeah, it we need to put that out. We need to put that out into the world. Yes. 
Uh, it's got to say, well, excuse me, princess, on this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You just get have him uh, uh, with his face from... I throw it to the ground. Just put a red, yeah, green yeah. cap on there and you're good to go. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a pot that he's throwing on the yeah, ground. Exactly, that's exactly what it's... Yes. <laughs> That's stupid, and I like it. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, we got some other Nintendo news here. Nintendo's share price jumps to its highest in two years following the Zelda movie news. Uh, uh, it's because they, a hundred percent, it's because they they said the Abbey Road was involved. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's that. It's the obvious. Everyone factor. went Abbey Road. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Uh, I'll be in a second, kiddo. Just hold on. I I just want to point out earlier. Yeah. Uh, your child, your gimmick, came up and wiped her nose on your sleeve, which was impressive. As fuck. She was just like, fuck you, dad. Yeah. That's just, there's no regard. There's no respect. Absolutely zero. Uh, and I'm just at this point, I'm like, yep, yeah, that's right. I am just a tissue. I am just a walking Kleenex. That's fair. Um, all right. Nintendo's share price jumps. The Zelda movie. This is from Chris Scullion at VGC. Nintendo's share price has jumped in value following the announcement of a Zelda movie that is in the works. The company's share price closed at 6,382 yen on Tuesday, uh, after which Nintendo after when Nintendo made the announcement. When trading started again today, the price immediately surged uh, by such uh, by as much as 6.7 percent. Um, not not too, too I guess not too surprising. I just it's always surpri- uh, I guess it does a little shock me a little that uh, investors care this much about big Hollywood movies. Here's the thing, right? Here's what I think whenever I see these kind of stories um, about financials uh, improving. Uh, when will I get some of that money? Yeah, you deserve some of that money. Because if you're telling me that you 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 have better shares and more money, unless unless I'm getting some, I don't give a shit. That's okay. That's that's fair. Uh, the, the, okay. the, the TAM dividends need to pay off uh, right now. Yeah. Uh, TAM, can you vamp for a second while I help this kid? I'll be right back. So so the the fact of the matter is like. Obviously, this is going to go up. Uh, shares are going to go up. Anytime a, a company that uh, says they're going to do something that people potentially want, shares generally go up, unless you're, I don't know, say the owner of a social network that you were forced to pay multiple billion dollars for because you made a joke on that social network, and then you have no idea because you've got literally one brain cell just bouncing around like a single-player Pong game in your brain. Usually, uh, your shares will go up if you say you want something. So something cool is going to happen. So unsurprising that Nintendo's shares go up. Also, isn't there like some stuff knocking around about a Switch potential two thing happening like people are speculating again about it or yeah there's there's been i mean they've gone back and forth you know really so yeah the zelda news happened but there's been a lot of news stories uh coming out of the latest uh, earnings report where nintendo's just like shit dude we are doing real good like everything we're doing turns to gold in fact, that's our uh, our next couple of stories. Uh, Nintendo says many series games have grown on Switch, uh, and many are long term sellers. This is from Nintendo Everything. Nintendo talked about Switch software sales during a financial results briefing today, and there are three key, key takeaways. First, many series have, have seen an increase in sales with games released on the Switch platform. A number of titles have also gone on to become long term sellers. Finally, games like Animal Crossing and Kirby have se- uh, seen more success outside of Japan on the switch uh there's actually some uh uh, data here let's bring it up here um starting with zelda uh zelda saw dramatic growth in in its uh, series sales um in november 2006 they released twilight princess on the wii that game did about seven and a half million copies versus 31.15 million for breath of the wild and already 20 million for uh for tears of the kingdom uh but Mm. You know, you say, okay, yeah, are these games just popping off? It's like, no, they are long-term sellers. Yeah. Breath of the Wild sold 8.5 million copies in its first and second fiscal year. Since then, it sold 22.6 million copies for a game that almost never goes on sale. Has been consistently $60 this entire time. Um, and it's also up uh, in every region. Uh, they point out here the Americas, uh, you know, it's 4 million for Twilight Princess, 7.5 million in the Americas. Um, things like that, uh, but the these the other region and Japan uh, are way up. They're just finding more people who care about Nintendo in Japan somehow, and then they are also doing better around the world. I, I bet most of that comes from China. 
Uh, this stuff is echoed for other franchises where Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, obviously a huge success. Uh, Mario Kart has always been the best-selling game on most uh, platforms from Nintendo. But like 37.38 million for Mario Kart Wii versus 57 million for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Animal Crossing, 44 million versus 13 million and, and 12 million for uh, the previous 3DS and DS entries. Smash Brothers at 32 million versus like, you know, it, the, the the Smash Brothers uh, brawl for Wii was the highest one before that. That was 13 and a half million. So just in every case, this is true for Mario as well. Uh, the Switch factor really is just popping off in a way yeah. that they have not ever really seen before, which I think puts them in a, a situation where whatever they do next has got to maintain this, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. They need to. Well, uh, there's also the element of like an... I'm going to sound a bit, this is going to sound kind of like negative, but I don't mean it in that way. Like they make all the good games on that console, oh, on, that, yeah, on yeah. that device. Like I, there's plenty of the amazing games. games uh, there's a lot, the, a lot of great indie yeah, games. The, on major, the games that you see on store shelves when you, when you go and buy a game or a switch or the games that are packaged with a switch when you buy them are Nintendo games. Like the best games that you are on the switch are Nintendo's games. So to some degree, like, as long as sales of the Switch are are healthy, sales of the software are probably going to be somewhat correlating to that as well because they just make all the good games that are, that are on that thing. Um, so that's that's a big part of it as well. But as you said, yes, I feel like the next thing that they make here now needs to maintain what they have uh, to kind of keep that momentum going. I they tried that before and i hope that they have learned their lesson from the wii u um because that was what that thing was designed to be right like but i feel like they they misunderstood a lot of like the the uh why people enjoyed the the wii and tried to do a weird thing at the same time as maintaining that's when nintendo starts to really like not fall apart but like that's when you're like oh is this a good idea when it's like we've got a crazy idea but we're gonna bolt it onto the thing that is a success already yep. uh, i i i feel like if they did the the boring thing here that that's the smartest thing where they just crank up the the power on us on a switch add like a make all led screens the default add some little bit of features here and there and just put that out as a a new version of the switch like the switch to switches back switch here that is the move that that is the move that gives them a little more road to work with without kind of upending the existing interest in it yeah uh they also seem like the one company that has um maintained a lot of the positive stuff that they got out of the pandemic um which is establishing uh, the, the switch as this uh ever growing library that new people mm. can come to and and they aren't shocked that a game from a couple years ago is still $60. They don't even think about it in those terms. They think about it, like you said, I come here for Nintendo games, the Nintendo games cost this much. And so when they do have long-term success and every single one of these games that's on the screen right now, like Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, Zelda, Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Party, Ring Fit, Adventure, Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, and Splatoon 2, every single of those ones I just mentioned, their first year sales have since been doubled. So they, they, or more than doubled. So they did, you know, really well in their first year, but then they they don't drop off, even though they don't go down in price that often. They continue to sell well into the, the you know, for, for many years following that. Um, and when, when that's the case, it's like, okay, Nintendo doesn't have to rush. They don't have to overreact. They don't have to um, think about what other people are doing and freak out and, 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 and have to uh, adjust to market realities. They are building their own market unto itself. And that is... Something that, you know, Sony at the beginning of this generation is definitely kind of eyeing, hey, how can we get closer to this and just establish Sony yeah. games as these things that are going to be this price for a little bit longer and people are just going to have to accept to pay them because they're that good and you can't miss out on them. Uh, but Nintendo's been the one company so far that's been able to figure that out. Yeah, for sure. Jeff, uh, you know that I am just full of just incredible ideas. As you know, like I've I've given multiple ideas in this one episode of Game Mess Mornings that I feel like are billion dollar ideas. Yeah, you're between, an idea guy. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's the idea. Okay. What was the last huge success for Nintendo? Uh I mean in terms of game releases or no uh, hardware before the the Switch. Wait, well, uh, pro I would say the Wii or the 3DS. The DS. Now imagine a switch 
with a switch. Hinges. You open a switch and you've got two switches. <laughs> the, the switch with the switch. I love that idea, Tam, of just a hinge, like a door just, hinge on two switches and you cram them together and the analog sticks are breaking and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is what we this is what we need, okay? The switch 3DS hybrid that makes the world just blow up with uh, with how much they love this thing I, oh god nyla and chat says the sandwich uh there you go there you go there uh, you that go. is a billion dollar idea that's perfect people love you know sandwiches what? they'll do it it will be incredible and they still won't put out a new metroid game on it get fucked kids kids trying to play mario odyssey and is getting frustrated because she can't leave the planet i'm gonna try to teach her kid okay go run over to your ship no okay you got to throw the hat at the globe and then you can select a different planet. All right. Pro, Out pro context, gamers. You, you sound like a absolute crackhead of a dad. Oh, yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm in context, too, buddy. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's, let's get through some of these other stories a little bit quicker. We're running out of time. Uh, Super Mario Wonders has sold 4.3 million units in its first two weeks. Uh, that's more info kind of coming out of their, uh, the, the, their uh, financial report. Um, that is, makes it the fastest selling Mario game since they started tracking these sales. I don't think that's surprising at all. How about you? No, Mario game does good. Where's my cut the check for me? Uh huh. Remember what I said about sales earlier? Good job. Mario selling Mario. Right. Money, uh, hey, numbers. make a new 2D Mario game that is interesting. I wonder if it would do well. Yes. I it wonder did. if it would do well. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> uh, there's a series of, of bad news here for studios around the world, starting with Embracer's Time Splitter Studio, Free Radical, which is facing closure. Uh, this is from Andy Robinson of VGC. Time Splitter's developer, Free Radical Design, is at threat of being closed by owner Embracer Group. Just two years after it was reestablished, sources have told VGC. For the past six months, Embracer has been carrying out a restructuring program, which is basically a panic we don't have any money program, uh, which has already seen some game studios closed and some projects canceled. This includes the closure of studios like Saints Row developer Volition and Campfire Cabal, while others have reportedly been put up for sale, such as Borderlands maker Gearbox. According to people close to Free Radical Design, the Nottingham UK-based studio has been part of the evaluation and employees have now been notified that it could close. As required by UK employment law, uh, Play On, the Embracer division which runs Free Radical, must consult employees for a minimum of 30 days before making any redundancies, including exploring ways to avoid them. There remains a possibility that the studio could remain open then should Embracer receive interest from third parties in, interested in acquiring it. Um, th yeah, I, the, the, I think this is this could be more illustrative of uh, where Embracer's at. Hey, wouldn't it be cool to buy Time Splitters, get a studio, bring back Free Radical to make it? Uh, isn't everybody excited about that? Yeah, sure. Let's. See. Is it going to be good? Well, actually, no. We're closing the studio before anything happens with it. It's no no vision except for old thing would be cool to bring back and that's going to make us money and uh of course it's going to be a a bunch of people paying the price for some silly aside from a big co corporation yeah it's kind of like this is the story of the modern age where a big corporation thinks that it's gonna make the next billion dollar thing happen by and overreaches and now is paying the price uh not itself but through layoffs people you know the People who have made no kind of uh, had no part in making those stupid decisions are now paying the price of it. Uh, let's uh, just keep going with this uh, report. Sega Sammy to continue belt tightening in Europe and more layoffs at Creative Assembly. This is from Alberto Garrido at Game Reactor. Uh, while yesterday we reported on Nintendo's healthy quarterly earnings. In, in which it adjusted its Nintendo Switch console figures and the million, uh, million dollar sales of its games. And now it's the turn uh, for its former competitor, Sega, with a much less enthusiastic balance sheet in which they advanced more steps of the restructuring in Europe uh, that they advanced a few weeks ago. In the document explaining the results report, there is a mention, that, uh, there is a mention of uh, restructuring and actually more layoffs at studios mainly creative assembly uh which uh, had their their game hyenas canceled a little bit ago uh mm. there's also a downward forecast of their overall financial expectations the report briefly explains that the restructuring plan will be to focus on its best known and established properties something they've said before and to reduce the number of active development developments as well as to open up to multi-platform markets um 
you, you were kind of waiting for uh, us to get on the other side of like a lot of this this bad news. I I was kind of I thought like, hey, okay, they did some cuts at Creative Assembly. Uh, they are stepping back and focusing on their their biggest uh, games. I thought it was done. The idea that oh no, they need to lay off even more people, especially at a studio like Creative Assembly, like we said we talked about last time, uh, carried carried Sega on its back when all Sega had was this, when it's, was its successful PC games, like the Total War series and, 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 uh, and, other, fran and other strategy franchises that uh, Creative Assembly worked on. So just more bummer news, and you just wish there was some other answer to all of this. Yep. I mean, like, I don't know what to say at this point. Like, it's... Uh, the whole, like, situation in this industry is is bad. Like, we talked about this in on Spot On last week, and it's just like, oh, what? Uh, why would anyone want to be in this industry now? Like coming into it, like well, even if you're like the most upbeat, aspirational person, and you're like, I want to make games, this surely is not enticing at all. Like uh, these kind of bad decisions that lead to, and also like to a degree, the economic changes that people can't predict. But this is this is leading to like a real stagnation in in the in the industry that I I find quite scary. Uh, Sega also just says they're gonna going to combine their European and American publishing divisions into one, and that mobile games will be more actively explored, uh, supported by the recent acquisition of Rovio. Uh, and then over at Ubisoft, uh, the brutal year continues. One hundred more people, actually more than one hundred more people, have been laid off. Uh, this is Eddie McCoo at GameSpot. Ubisoft is undergoing further restructuring that will re result in additional layoffs. The company confirmed to GameSpot that it is eliminating 98 positions from its Canadian workforce and 124 positions overall in its latest headcount reduction. 2023 has been a year marked by layoffs in the games development scene, and the trend is not stopping. In a statement to GameSpot, a spokesperson for Ubisoft said, Every team inside Ubisoft has spent the past few months exploring ways to streamline its business. Layoffs are a part of that. In this context, today we announced that we are re reorganizing our Canadian studio's general and administrative functions and reducing headcount in Hybride, our VFX studio based in Montreal, and in our global IT team, which impacts 124 positions overall. These are not decisions uh, taken lightly, and we are providing comprehensive support for our colleagues who will be leaving Ubisoft during this transition. We also want to share our utmost gratitude and respect for their many contributions to the company. Um, it's... Uh, for most of these studios, most of these publishers, uh, they are making probably enough money to make this all make sense. If it weren't for the fact that coming out of the pandemic, they are like, hey, everything's going to keep going up. We're going to make big bets. And and then, uh, of course, the, um, the the money markets tightened up and, and capital became more difficult to come by because interest rates went up. Uh, yep. And it's these are things so far outside of the control of people who make games. And yet the things that they, these people usually can control they are, for the most part, making pretty good games. And people want these games, and they're selling pretty well. Uh, uh, the last Assassin's Creed game was a big hit for Ubisoft. Assassin's Creed Mirage did surprisingly well. It's just the disconnect between the games that we're getting, the quality of games, people figuring this stuff out and doing really well with that side of things, to then, oh, everyone's got to get laid off because of some unrelated reason. It's very frustrating, Tam. Yeah, I, again, like as an extension of what I was saying previously, like it is people, it feels like people are like dug themselves holes so deep that even like the best case scenarios of games doing well do little to nothing to improve the situation. And as a result, you know, the developers, like as you said, that had no impact and no decision making ability in these giant swings that are now um, biting people or hitting people in the back of their head is had any impact on that are now suffering because of it it is it is part of like the the kind of cruel cyclical nature of video games where people think that they can go from being like oh well this you know very high revenue industry but we need more like we always need more we need more control we need more revenue potential we need to take over more of gamers lives we need to monetize every moment of it it's just it's insidious, like in a way that that is like destructive. And the sad thing is, like people who make these decisions are often people that have little to no interest in the health of video games. They yes. are here to to make that money, get out as quick as possible, and then let someone else deal with the repercussions. I can't think of a single person who I would 
genuinely say like this is an executive or a person with decision making ability in video games that i honestly maybe phil spencer actually probably phil like that i honestly believe cares about video games and wants to do things to kind of improve the situation around them there are people probably i'm forgetting like i don't know like reggie was that kind of person as well and but these days i'm just like everyone just feels like they are just really leaning into the like gross you know ceo stereotype and whether they are or not like it certainly looks that way when you look at all these layoffs happening and these people earning crazy money at the top just being like sorry we thank you for your contributions we'll take care of you maybe it's fucked up yep uh last story here real quick the anacrusis is launching out of early access in december uh from cameron woolsley at destructoid um after nearly two years of toiling toiling away in early access mines developer stray bombay has announced that the anacrusis officially launches this december of course this is um uh, the slap master himself will smith's game uh he's getting jiggy with it over there making a left for dead like um they are taking it into 1.0 in december uh, I, I'm ready to check this game out again. They have they did a versus mode that when this game launched it was just co-op. I think they have a versus mode where it's like some people can play as the the aliens that you go up against. Uh, yeah, that seems like it would be a good thing to to mess around with. So we'll check. I'm that excited out again. to check it out as well. One more story that you crossed off. Blizzard president believes players. Yeah, have okay, no yeah, patience. hit me with it. Okay, like Blizzard president Mike Yabara called out players for having no patience nowadays. They expect content all the time while also hoping that it reaches a certain level of quality. Why do you think that is, Mike? <laughs> is it because maybe you fucking trained them to do that? Mm-hmm. Mike? You and mm-hmm. everyone else? Like, is, Mike? It, is it really their fault, Mike? Mm, fucking Mike. Just like, match it. People saying wild shit right now. <laughs> I don't know, like... Fucking uh, the, uh, Mike Yabara is a very smart person, and from all from every from every like uh, report, like a nice guy as well. But like that was a stupid thing to say. It, the industry literally reinvented itself to make it so you're constantly drip feeding content, and your right, players are good always for yes. turning turning the game on, expecting something new. There, this is your fault. Yes. All right? Don't blame the players. And you've been making Thank games you. like that for a very long time for a reason. Uh, I it always uh, whenever people come out with, and speak about like the realities of the market. Also, also like uh, okay. also just to be clear, gamers are very entitled. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I right, agree but, with but, that. But, like, but don't hey, blame the we're members. gamers. We could say that, <laughs> Mikey Bar. We don't want to hear it from you. What we want to hear from yeah. you is what what's how is Blizzard contributing to the realities of how things work? That's what I was going to get at. So I was like, yes, exactly. Yeah. Like if if you are the executive of a company. You are in control of a lot. Speak about the things that you control. We'll t- we'll talk yeah. about. Hey, as gamers, maybe we are entitled and and all this stuff. So we definitely are. Uh, but let's just be r- realistic about our position in this space. And Mikey Barris is very different, and probably could speak to some other factors that are causing that. All right. Yeah. Poll question from Monday: Do you play Call of Duty campaigns? Yes. Usually got thirty four percent. Uh, no, I don't play Call of Duty at all. Got 58%. And no, I just play multiplayer is 8%. I went with no, I just play multiplayer because that's uh, what I ended up doing over the last several Call of Duty games that I did play is I just played the multiplayer and didn't really touch the campaign. So uh, I, you could, I guess you could see why uh, Activision rushed out a campaign for this game because people claim to care about it. Uh, even though it's it's trash, it's probably still just a bullet point on the back of the box and that's going to help them. Uh, but I haven't touch this yet tam have you got around to trying out the campaign a tiny bit enough to be able to verify our reviewer it's very um, boring yes and, and and yeah i i there's a real like discussion to be had about what call of duty is in this day and age just to like set the table because it's not one of the there was a time when call of duty was this experience that you played because it was a tight single player campaign that was awesome like four hours five hours and it was always like a hell of a great time now it is not that at all it is a repeatedly kind of iterated on online game that has a a single player desperately attached to it and it's just pure garbo uh we have a new poll question we'll get to in a second first though uh let's see what do we have going on in giant bomb and tam what do you have going on uh, that we should uh plug uh what do we have going on um so... i'm playing alan wake after this I'm yeah, going to continue playing, uh, uh, playing Alan Wake 2, yes. Yes, and voicemail dump truck is happening later on. 
And then, yeah, that's today sorted. Jeff and I are going to be recording spot on. Lucy's away for a little while, so I'm bringing in a, a ringer to help Ooh. me out. Ooh, that sounds Young so Jeff, interesting. Jeff Grubb. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we're going to talk about teasing video games, probably. We're talking about what the hell they're thinking. Um, let's see. Uh, people are asking about B Light Club. Mikey's out, so no Blight Club today obviously uh uh but we were going to do a b light club but since we're off on friday we're moving things we're kind of like compacting the week so uh we're doing voicemail dump truck on a wednesday we're doing uh, a, a, a bombcast revengeance on a thursday so i figure we'll play alan wake 2 today we'll get back to Blight club uh next next week uh we had some ideas for b light club there's just not enough time in a shorter week with the, the amount of people we have working on stuff uh but yeah things will get back to normal next week Let's see that poll question. Grand Theft Auto 6 is real? And your options are, look at us. Who would have thought and not me? Um, I, I, I no, you should do a Grand Theft Auto 6 is real uh, and then do yes, no, maybe. No, we can, we can do both. Let's, uh, let's see here. Uh, I just want people to go, no. Grand Theft Auto <laughs> Absolutely. 6 is real. No, you should do a Grand, Grand Theft Auto 6 main character, Jimmy. And uh, Jim, what's his name? Jimmy? Is it Hopkins? Jimmy Bully. Jim, yeah, Jimmy Bully. Uh, Roman Bellick. Um, Daniel Radcliffe. Okay. Yep. No problem. Thanks. No. Yeah. Yeah. Go get the other kid. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get. I'll get her fed. Don't worry. Uh, all right. Posting that as well. We'll talk about both of those. On the show tomorrow. Uh, until then, though. you won't you won't see me on Fridays. No Dregs Day. No Dregs Day this week. So yes, we're wrapping up the week on a Thursday Dregs Day. Uh, until then, though, uh, Tam, thank you so much for spending today talking with me about video games. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me, as always. Until next time, everyone, take care of yourself. You're the best audience in gaming. Have a good one and goodbye. I did everything right, and they <laughs> indicted me. All right.